Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1980 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Chicago White Sox and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Sox is Ross Baumgarten, whose record is 12-12 with a 4.88 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Jack Morris, whose record is 15-10 with a 4 ERA. And so yesterday's game was pretty much the nail in the coffin. Uh, it would take an absolute miracle right now to come back. We only have uh, 20 games to go, uh, 19 after today. And we're, we are now eight games back. Unfortunately, uh, Senior Smoke, our closer, uh, gave up three runs in the ninth inning, the top of the ninth, and uh, we lost six to three. And it's going to be tough to come back. Uh, I'm trying to remain optimistic, but we're one in five in September. We've suffered so many injuries, and uh, it does not look good. We get Omar Marino back in five days, and that'll be helpful because right now center field is giving us nothing. Um, let's go ahead and get to this game. As we uh, can see here, all the bullpen is available, uh, which, you know, at this point, uh, they're all running on flames. And uh, the lineup today uh, against the second left-hander in a row, I've decided to stick all the best people in there, uh, even if they don't hit lefties well. I mean, we have to go with the, the group that got us here. Uh, and I put Bob Baylor in center field for Tony Armas, who is batting 173 for us since his call-up from AAA. Bob ba Baylor is only slightly better with a 197 batting average. So he's batting ninth today, uh, Baylor is. And so let's take a look at the White Sox lineup. And over here on the right side, you'll see a uh, tops card that represents them. Batting leadoff and playing third base is Joe Gates. Batting second and playing first base is Mike Squires. Batting third and DHing today is Henry Cruz. Batting cleanup and catching is Marv Foley. Batting fifth and in left field is Ron Pruitt. Batting sixth and in right field is Rusty Kuntz. Batting 7th and at shortstop is Fran Mullins. Batting 8th and in center field today is Jerry Hairston. And batting ninth and playing 2nd base is a guy named Schaefer as it takes its sweet time loading it up. Oh, it's Jeff Schaefer. Okay, so he's our 2nd baseman today for the White Sox. On the mound for the Tigers... It's our ace, Jack Morris. He has uh, only won one of his last three starts. Um, he's been roughed up quite a bit, bringing his ERA up to four. His 30th start on the year, uh, 202 innings pitch with 142 Ks. So a pretty good strikeout ratio there. Opponents are betting 265. And he's got three complete games with a shutout. So let's go ahead and get this game going. Joe Gates leading off against Jack Morris. And Gates hits it on a rope to left field, caught by Kemp. That's the first out. Next up, he stacked the lefties, one through four there. Next up is Mike Squires, and Squires hits a fly ball to center. Baylor makes the catch. Two down. And here is Henry Cruz, 324 versus righties. And he gets the first hit for the Sox, a base hit to left. And then Kemp guns him down, trying to stretch it out to, uh, for a double. And that's it for the top of the first. We're going to the bottom of the first. We'll do the Tigers lineup now. Batting leadoff and playing second base, Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second, and at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting third, and playing first base is Jason Thompson. 
Batting cleanup and playing DH today is Carlton Fisk. Batting fifth and in left field is Steve Kemp. Batting sixth and catching is Lance Parrish. Batting seventh and in right field is Gary Hancock. Batting eighth and at third base is Richie Hebner. And batting ninth and in center field is Bob Baylor. Pitching for the Sox, Ross Baumgarten. He's uh, lost three in a row. He has one win in his last 10 starts. Uh, this is his third start against Detroit. And his 34th start overall. He's 12 and 12 with a 4.88 ERA. Career highs in uh, innings pitched and strikeouts. 12 wild pitches and nine hit batters. So he's been a little reckless on the mound. And he's got one complete game this season. So we have the lefty Sweet Lou Whitaker leading off against Ross Baumgarten. And look at that. Base hit to right field to start off the bottom of the first. And we're going to hold Whitaker at first. And uh, we're going to let Trammell swing away. I know that I typically will hit run. As Trammell hits a fly ball to center field. Caught by Harrison. You'll see that Harrison is normally their second baseman. But he's been moved to center field. And his uh, outfield rating is well below average. So he's playing out of position. And hopefully that'll come into effect later on in the game. As Thompson hits a blooper into left center field, and it's caught by the left fielder, Ron Pruitt. That's two down. We're going to try to steal second base with Whitaker. Stealing on a lefty, kind of a risky move. And he's successful. So we have a runner in scoring position for Carlton Fisk, batting 328 versus lefties. But only one for five against Baumgartner this year. And there's a base hit to center field. Falls in front of Harrison, and Whitaker scores. So we get on the board first in the third game of this series. It's one nothing Detroit, and Kemp strikes out swinging. So we go to the second inning. Marv Foley leading off. He's two for three against Morris so far this season. Make it three for four as he gets a base hit into left field. So Foley leads off the inning with the base hit. Next up is Ron Pruitt. And Morris walks Pruitt. So the beginnings of a rally here by the White Sox with Rusty Koontz up next. Oh, ground ball past Hebner at third. And a run scores. And it's all tied up. Three batters. Still nobody out. Fran Mullins. Up next, first time facing Morris this year. And he hits a ground ball to shortstop. We do turn two as Pruitt is safe at third. So with two down and Pruitt on third base, here's Jerry Harrison. And Harrison gets a base hit into center field. And it's two to one. And that will bring up uh, Jeff Schaefer making his season debut, making his uh, career debut. And uh, looks like he played for the Mariners. I don't remember him on the White Sox, but that's not saying he wasn't as he gets a uh, fly ball into a left field and it's caught by Kemp. And the Tigers are down two to one with Lance Parrish leading off the bottom of the second. And Parrish hits it into the gap, left center field, and it's caught by Pruitt for the first out. One down for Gary Hancock. Hancock hits a fly ball to center. It's two outs. Two down for Richie Hebner, and he pops it up on the infield to the second baseman, Schaefer. And we go to the third. Leading off the inning is a leadoff man, Joe Gates. He did not play in yesterday, yesterday's game. And there's an infield single to third. So you know he's going to be running. He's got 40 stolen bases on the year. As Squires hits a ground ball to short. And they turn two again. So the, the hit and run was not on. With the speedy gates. We'll take the double play. 
That'll leave it up to Henry Cruz. Cruz strikes out swinging. And we go to the bottom of the third. Bob Baylor leading off the inning. 0 for 4 against Baumgarten this year. There's a base hit up the middle. And that will be a good opportunity for Whitaker to hit and run with the speedy Baylor on base. And Whitaker hits a fly ball into foul ground on the first base side. So one down. We're going to try to get Baylor to steal second base here. He leads the team with 23 stolen bases. And there's the 24th. Most of those stolen bases were with uh, Toronto uh, from earlier in the year before the trade to Detroit. Trammell hits a line drive to first. It's caught by Squires. There's two down now. JT's up next. Three for seven. He does have a home run against Baumgarten from uh, the last series. And he hits a ground ball to Squires, and that is the third out. So to the top of the fourth. Mar Foley's up. He's the one that got it all started in the second inning. And he's not done as he hits a fly ball that gets out of here. The home run to right center field. That is the 12th home run. I'm sorry, the 14th home run for Foley. And it's 3-1 to one White Sox. And uh, you could feel the... Uh, you could hear the, the air being let out of the balloon. I guess I should say, as Pruitt gets a base hit to right field. And uh, that's the seventh hit against Morris. As he's falling apart down the stretch, throws a well pitch, Pruitt goes to second. Yeah, he's, um, you know, he's got career highs in pretty much everything, so um, he is definitely struggling now. As he strikes out uh, Rusty Kuntz, there's one down, runner in second base for Mullins. And he strikes out. So three Ks now for Morris. Bringing up Jerry Harrison, switch hitter, batting 251 against Morris. And he walks Harrison to get to the rookie, Schaefer. So first and second for Schaefer. And he pops it up on the infield. Looks like Whitaker should have that. And there's the third out of the inning. So they tack on another run. With the home run by Foley, we go to the bottom of the fourth. Carlton Fisk leading off with a walk. Runner on first for Kemp. And he walks. So back-to-back -back walks by Baumgarten gives Parrish a chance here for an RBI, perhaps. And he hits a line drive to center field. And Harrison makes the catch. He should not be able to throw out Fisk. And he doesn't as Fisk advances to third. So an opportunity here. We're going to hit and run with uh, Gary Hancock, who does not hit lefties well. We already know that. Batting 171. Oh, look at that. Base hit to left field. Fisk scores. Kemp takes third. He was moving on the play. So first and third. One out. If it worked once again, we'll try it. 3-2 to two Detroit now. Chance for Hebner. And he hits a ground ball to second base. Kemp does score. We even up at the score at three. Hancock takes second base. Two down for Bob Baylor. He had a base hit his first time up. And he hits a line drive right at Squires to end the inning. We go to the fifth. Three all. Joe Gates leading off the inning. Morris is at 70 pitches as Gates hits a ground ball to Thompson, who of course boots it. Why wouldn't he? That allows Gates an opportunity to get a stolen base with Mike Squires up next. No, doesn't even need to. Squires gets a base hit into center. Gates takes third. We're going to pull the infield in. With the lefty Henry Cruz up. And Cruz is going to get a sack fly to center. And the White Sox take the lead once again. Four to three. Sox, one down. For Mar Foley, who just absolutely crushed it his last time up. And he hits a pop fly to trammel it short. It's caught. 
for the second out. So with two down, Ron Pruitt steps in. And Squires, a first baseman, steals on Parrish. Got to pull the uh, outfield in, try to prevent any bloopers from falling in. And there's a ground ball to center field. And Squires scores. 5-3. to three. Pruitt on first. And Koontz hits a ground ball to short. And that'll be the end of the inning. Sox put another two runs on the board. And before we hit to the, get to the bottom of the fifth, we're going to go ahead and do our uh, daily robot race. So that's coming up right now. Okay, everybody. Here we go. Today's robot race. The uh, contestants are Dooglad B, who won yesterday's race. And then we have Stephen M, who is a member at Baseball Mogul's Facebook page. And then we have, from Baseball Gaming Extravaganza, we have Shannon C, who is the uh, site moderator, as well as Paul M and Donald G. And our final contestant is Keith at Not Your Status Quo which is a, a YouTube channel here about uh, basically about Star Wars and Marvel um, uh, universes. So uh, you can uh, check them out by looking up Not Your Status Quo. And so that's all the contestants today. We're going to go ahead and shuffle these characters one time. All right, there we go. And we are ready to get started on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, an early lead from Keith and Not Your Status Quo. The friendly robot of uh, Shannon C is falling. But, oh, nope, it's coming back here. Coming back hot. Trying to greet the finish line. And now we got a couple. I've got a, Oh, we got three coming up hot on uh, Keith and Not Your Status Quo. Well, that one was over early, so congratulations to Keith and not your status quo. Now, let's get back to, oh, I'm sorry, Sh Shannon C. So congrats to Shannon C, and uh, we'll get back to the game now. Okay, hope you all enjoyed the uh, robot race, and now that we've had a little bit of a break, a little time to regroup, here's a chance for uh, the Tigers. We've got to come back. We're down by two. Trammel hits a ground ball to first. And he's out. One down. Baumgarten at 64 pitches. And there's his third walk. Trammel on first for Thompson. We could really use a uh, home run here. Nope. It's going to be a double play instead. And we go to the sixth. Uh, five to three. Uh, we're going to go ahead and flip it over into the in-game stats. You can take a look and see. Um, I mean, maybe Fisk might be the um, player of the game so far. So here's Fran Mullins leading off the inning. He hits a fly ball to center field. Caught by Baylor. One down. And really, as Morris is at 88 pitches, I mean, what are we going to do? Go to our bullpen? I mean, we may as well just let him pitch it out. Harrison hits a ground ball to third. Two down for Schaefer. Schaefer gets a base hit, his first major league hit. In the center field, 10 hits for the White Sox. Next up is Joe Gates getting on base every way he can. He hits a ground ball to Hebner, and that is the end of the top of the six. So we go to the bottom. Carlton Fisk leading off. Two for six, two walks against Baumgarten. And he gets his second hit of the game. So Fisk is two for two. Steve Kemp up next. He was listed as tired before the game, so I'm not sure I'm expecting a whole lot from him as uh, he is the first out of the inning, bringing up Parrish, also listed as tired, if I recall. And he hits a ground ball right back to Baumgarten, and that's, of course, the third double play of the game for the Sox. We go to the top of the seventh. Mike Squires leading off. And Squires hits a ground ball to Trammell. 
That's the first out. Next up is Henry Cruz. Strikes out on an inside pitch. Fourth strikeout for Morris. Next up is Marv Foley. It's a ground ball to Thompson. And we go to the bottom of the seventh. They're going to replace Hairston in center field with Chet Lemon. Like, why wouldn't you just start Chet, Chet Lemon? I don't know. But, um, okay. So, defensive replacement. Much better center fielder now. So, we did not take advantage of that opportunity. As Hancock pops it up. Second baseman has it. There's one down. Next up is Richie Hebner. Hebner might get a blue pit on this one. And no, the Lemon makes the running catch. And there's two down. And that will leave it up to Bob Baylor. Baylor walks. Uh, I don't feel like we can risk it with uh, Baylor stealing second. We've already got two stolen bases. And maybe that was a good move as Whitaker gets a base hit. Baylor takes third. And uh, we need a clutch hit here from Trammell. Two for eight against uh, Baumgarten. And 0 for two on the day with a walk. And he shoots it to right field and it gets down off the wall. And we are going to stretch that into a triple. No, come on. You know, I should have just taken an extra second to think about it. But with Trammell's speed and Rusty Kuntz's arm, I, that should have, been, um, should have been a triple. But I got greedy. And that was the third out of the inning. So never make the third out at third. That's the old adage. But uh, why should I follow that? The game is tied here in the eighth. Morris is still in there, and um, there he is, striking out. Ron Pruitt, five Ks for Morris, kind of turning it around now. As Coons hits a line drive to center, it's caught uh, by Baylor for the second out. Two down for Fran Mullins, and Mullins pops it up on the infield. I'm probably going to bring uh, Morris out for the ninth at this point as they're bringing in a new pitcher. Baumgarten is out, and they're bringing in Dewey, who got the win yesterday. He's actually uh, tired because uh, of his multiple innings pitched yesterday. But he got that win. He's 4-7, 3-9-4 ERA. Uh, opponents are betting 232. And that's his 11, he has 11 saves, even though he's not the closer, he's the setup man. JT leading off against him. Thompson hits a ground ball to um, Squires. Sorry, I was thinking about what move I was going to make. I guess we're going to bring in Champ Summers in place of Carlton Fisk, who's batting 230 versus righties. So we have no trust in him. Oh, and there's uh, Champ Summers, who does have that pinch hit home run. I believe it was a pinch hit walk-off home run. But, of course, Dewey gets his revenge by striking out uh, Summers, who, what, which Fisk could have easily done. And Kemp pops it up. So 1-2-3 inning, when we could have maybe given ourselves a chance to put this game away. And instead, we have to go to the ninth which is a risky proposition. Chet Lemon leading off his first at bat of the game. Lemon hits a ground ball to Trammell. There's one down. With one out, here's Jeff Schaefer. Schaefer pops it up on the infield to Whitaker. And Whitaker makes the catch. So back to the top of the lineup for Joe Gates. We're going to guard the lines, try to prevent any uh, extra base hits. Gates hits a ground ball to short. Trammell makes the play. Mo Morris was officially listed as tired. So that, that will be the last inning for him. We'll bring in a lefty to face the next three lefties. So, I mean, I guess a good job by Morris overall. Uh, we're still in the game. Unfortunately, our offense is just pathetic. Um, and part of that is because everybody's tired. Whitaker, Trammell, uh, Kemp, and Parish were all listed as tired. But not Gary Hancock, who's three for three with a home run. 
And he hit, gets, hits a ground ball to a second. That's his first out against Dewey this season. So two down for Richie Hebner. And Hebner grounds out. So we go to the 10th. Another extra inning game. We're taking out Morris. We're going to bring in Capizello. He's our best lefty. And uh, that means Mike Squires, the lefty batting 177 versus lefties, will face Capizello. And naturally he gets a base hit. So here's Henry Cruz. There's a walk. And here's Mar Foley. Yep. I mean, there's nothing you can do when the game wants you to lose. <laughs> so we're going to um, just bring in some old schlub. I guess we'll bring in... Uh, we'll bring in Stanley. First and third. Pruitt hits a fly ball to center. One down as the run scores. Seven to five now. Kutz hits a ground ball to second base. There's a double play. And uh, so we're going to pinch hit Baylor with Gibby. Give Gibby a chance to swing away. And uh, that might have paid off. As it falls in, it goes all the way to the wall. So Gibson gets a double. Nice job by Gibby. Might have to just give him a start as Whitaker hits it to the one person you can't hit it to. The shortstop. One down for Trammell. Hey, Trammell thinks, why not? I'll do that too. And two down, here's uh, JT. And that's the third out. So... We lose this one 7-5 to five, as we've lost most of the games this month um, in the ninth inning. Totally unreliable and good. I'm glad George Capazillo is injured because uh, he blew that game. And uh, he will be out for the rest of the season. So let's take a look at the standings. And yeah, we're nine games back. And so we are toast at this point as Boston is eliminated. Yankees up to almost 90 wins. We've had, we were at 79 wins for almost two weeks now, I think, right? No, I guess like eight days, nine, nine, nine games, I guess is the way I should look at it. So, um, yeah, so that's been a bummer. Transactions, other than our boy Capizello. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull up the box score. We'll get out of here. Another bummer of a game. One in six in the month of September. I'd fire that manager. He's undeserving. On to 1981. But we advance. That's going to be a strike-shortened season. Uh, let's see here. Morris. Goes nine. Does the best he could. Capazello comes in and just uh, takes a big dump on the pitcher's mound. As uh, he gives up two runs and two hits and a walk. And uh, Dewey gets a second win in a row. And Ed Farmer gets his fourth save. Um, I guess we give the player of the game to Fisk. It was two for two in a walk. All right, so that's it from Tiger Stadium for today. We have the last place A's coming into town tomorrow. And uh, I, who knows if we'll fare any better or not. But we'll give it a shot. Maybe we'll get some of the, the rookies in there. So until tomorrow, everyone, have a great night.